Oh, yeah. The Model 3 has finally made its way to the UK in the right-hand drive mode. It looks so damn good. So today I wanted to give you a quick overview of the car. I haven't even had it for 24 hours yet. It is super stormy, by the way. I don't know if you can see, but like, it is super stormy today. And uh, yeah, I wanted to do like a real good professional video and stuff, but because of the rain and all the winds, I just can't. So I thought what we do today for a little bit of fun is have a little bit of an overview, go through the whole car, have a drive in it, and show you guys what it's all about. Let me know what you think down below in the comment section. And what I really want you guys to do is come up for a name for this guy, okay? So my Model X is called Doom, and then what is this one gonna be called? Let's take a good look then around the car and have a look at its absolutely gorgeous lines. So this I actually only ordered four months ago. I did order one three years ago, but I canceled it. But starting up this Tesla driver channel, I thought I've got to get a Model 3. So this is probably the biggest investment I've ever put into a YouTube channel. It cost me just over 60,000 pounds and it's absolutely glorious. So I got it obviously in the black. It's a dual motor performance and you can tell that obviously by the wheels uh, and a couple of other things like a spoiler and stuff that I'll take you around. Uh, but yeah, this is every option ticked. So this is kind of top spec Model 3. And I think it looks absolutely gorgeous. So let's have a quick look around it, shall we? So this has got the 20 inch alloys with the red brake calipers which look really, really cool. But I think I might shadow those, make those kind of black or very, very dark gray. Uh, and then I think I'm also going to de-chrome it because I'm not the biggest fan of all the chrome, as you guys will know. But you can see here, it's got the almost Aston Martin-esque doors that you kind of pull out like that, which are really, really cool. But obviously they sit flush, so it's really good for wind resistance and whatnot. So that's brilliant. Going around here, obviously the other alloys. And then at the back, the only thing that's different is this carbon fiber spoiler here. Now this was actually put on the car when I when I got it the other day, but apparently some people, they don't have that on it and they actually have to get it stuck on at a later date, which is a bit strange. So you can see it's dual motor with the red line underneath, which means performance, no exhausts, obviously. All of these, uh, like these down here and these here need to be smoked uh, and blacked out a bit. I hope you can hear me. And this here is obviously the charging port where if you tap it, you've now got type two at the top, which is like what I've got, for example, there on the wall. And then you've got CCS here for rapid charging. Now you can't push this down. Don't push this down. It will go down on its own. So just leave it like that for now. Let's just have a look, continue around the whole side of the car and back to the front. I think it's gorgeous. And I, in real life, I think it looks way, way better than what I was expecting. So all you need to do is go up to the car and put this just under the camera here. And you'll see that it's actually locking it right now, but you heard the little beep for the little toot. And there you go, it opens it up. So you do that, the car is now open. You can push onto the handle and just kind of pull it out like that. And it opens up a frameless door, which is really nice, into the softest and most simple interior you will ever see on a car. Now, I'm gonna be totally honest with you. These seats are the comfiest seats I think I have sat in, in a car, period. But for a car that you can get for £35,000 starting price, these seats are unbelievable. In fact, my mum came around to have a look at the car and she sat in it. And even though like this car has so much other cool stuff, she sat in and was like, these seats, these seats are next level. Because they really are. So they're obviously the pure white, which I'm a little bit worried about because they are very, very white. They're the whitest seats I've ever seen. Uh, and I'm not exactly the cleanest of guys when it comes to my cars. I love to use my cars. I don't baby them, I use them. And I'm a little bit worried that these seats are gonna get a little bit darker as time goes on, but it's absolutely amazing in here. Such a nice cabin to be in. Let's have a look around everything. And I'm gonna try and go into as much detail as possible as I can. Let's start off talking about the driving position that we have here. As you can see, it is pretty minimalistic. There is no screen or any kind of analog dials obviously in front of us. And we've just got the one screen to worry about over there on the left. But in terms of position of the seat, it's really, really nice. And the wheel has so much adjustment that you can kind of get it wherever you want. And the wheel itself actually feels kind of small. It kind of feels like a go-kart. And I really, really like that. You can see as well, there's one strip all the way across the car on the dashboard. That right there is the ventilation. So there's no actual vents around. It's just that whole strip. And you can customize it. And I'll show you that obviously in the infotainment system in a minute. Over here, you've got your door open. 
and you've got your windows. So obviously you control all your windows here. And this as well is really nice. It's lovely contrasting stitching here. And you've got the white panels here. Everything is super soft touch. And then you've got these, you've got speakers everywhere you've got speakers speakers a speaker bar all the way across there more speakers all around us speakers down here in the doors and this is potentially the best sound system i've had in a car as well it even oh hello it even beats my uh, i8 harman Kardon speaker setup that i think cost a few thousand pounds whereas these speakers just seem so so good as far as storage goes you've got loads of storage under this kind of horrible piano black it's just so so fingerprinty like you can see that it's really dirty already so i think i'm gonna wrap this i think i'm gonna wrap everything that's like piano black into the carbon fiber so it matches the spoiler but anyway these are little storage areas here so you, you can see i've threaded through my uh, lightning cable and you can put your phone up here if you actually peel this back you get access there to where you can thread your cables through uh, and whatnot just under kind of like this little piece of rubber which is really really nice and i need to set it up properly and then you can close it with your phone in there so that you're not distracted you've then got another one here which if you just push down opens up a huge compartment down there but what i have found strange is closing it because naturally you push it close and it just opens but what you actually have to do is just really softly close it and it just kind of magnetically attaches, I assume. Then you've got two cup holders right here, which are pretty basic, they're cup holders. Uh, and then in here, you've got your glove box, and of course you've got more space, and then you've got more space under there. So plenty of space. There's also a 12 volt in there, and some USBs, so you can plug things in and charge things. I'm not sure what that wrapper's about. There's also plenty of space in the glove box, which you open by using the screen. As you can see, it goes quite deep down there, which is pretty good. You can't close it by using the screen, sadly. It just undoes the latch, so you do have to put it up. And then you have got plenty of space down here for a big water bottle uh, and some kind of knickknacks that I guess you're going to end up putting down there and down there. And then up here, we've got the SOS and the hazards. So that's how you do that. If you press the SOS, you get six seconds to cancel the call. The so, emergency call has been cancelled. There you go. So you can see that that's the emergency there. Now, before, that actually didn't have a six-second delay. And if you pressed it, the emergency services would come straight out. So that was updated in the software. Thank God it was, because I think with Fat Fingers, An you quite easily accidentally press that instead of pressing the hazards we've also got the famous camera which i don't know if i'm going to cover up i might cover up and then these push led lights which are really really nice i do like those and then as we come up here into the visor you can see oh how do we do this oh oh it's like the folio case on the um ipad oh oh no way ready are you ready for this Oh yeah. Because this is the performance as well, I've got the performance uh, pedals, which is basically just metal instead of plastic. Now I've actually got size 15 UK feet. So I think that's about, I think it's 16 American feet. So I've got really, really big feet. And as you can see, there's actually plenty of space down here for my feet. I do get caught just at the top here, um, but it's not too bad. But normally I kind of have my foot further away. I have had problems in smaller cars before where my feet just don't fit but luckily they do. And you've got a nice rest here uh, on the left, which my foot just, literally just fits in. I'm quite a big guy, but you know what? It's actually pretty snug in here and it's quite nice. I've really quickly just jumped into the back of the car as well. For the first time, actually, my seat is set into its normal settings and I'm about 6'2", six, 6'3". Six, and as you can see, I've actually got no leg room, but I can fit in and because, you know, you spread your legs a little bit, I can actually fit in with my seat fully back as I would normally have. One slight problem though is the foot space. There's not much foot space for me and I can't tuck my feet under here, which is a little bit annoying, but hey, I'm not actually going to be in the back seat, so I don't mind too much. And then you've got like little airplane style things that you can put a magazine in or whatever you're going to put into those. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, and then at the back here, you've got your, does this come down? You've also got an armrest which is super hard to get out. Ugh. There we go, for the first time of doing it, which has two cup holders in there, and then you can push this up as well if you want to, and I think you just push, you push that? Yeah, and push that back in. So pretty handy in the middle there. Um, I wouldn't want to sit three abreast, to be certainly honest in this, but two people in the back is definitely a comfy drive. There's loads of headroom, as you can see, look at that, loads and loads of headroom. Uh, which is great because obviously it's got the glass ceiling and then you've got a couple of little coat hooks up here as well which just pop out and then you've got your led lights up here just like 
in the front. And the final thing in the back is two USBs here. Now you only get these if you upgrade to the premium interior, which is obviously the, the white and black interior. If you upgrade, you get those two USBs. If you don't upgrade weirdly, there is no USBs in the back. And I think that's them showing that this isn't a car for like a full family. They really want you to get the Model S or the Model X, unless you pay that little bit extra. I think that's what they've done here. But it's really, really nice in the back here. Although a little bit tight, it's really comfortable and I would do a long drive quite happily actually. Let's take a look then at the boot as well. Now sadly it's not actually a power assisted. Uh, it has got I think some kind of hydraulics there but it doesn't come up and close by itself. Uh, you can see this just with my camera kit in here. But it's actually a really, really big boot. Like if I push this bag all the way to the back so you can get a sense. It's a really, really big boot. And then the best thing about it under here is tons of space like tons and tons of space and then you've also got some dead space down here which is brilliant to put like pram handles so that you can carry your pram all the way across really well thought out and i believe you can actually buy something that makes this power lifted so that you can press a button now when it would close but to be honest i'm not too bothered for now it's just gonna have to be like that lift it up and there's all your goodies from tesla so what the tesla give you they actually give you a three pin wall adapter so this obviously just plugs in uh, to a three amp at home you've got then your type 2 connector which is really good they actually never used to give you this and then you've got your eu road safety kit with things like your traffic um cone and loads of different stuff in there um and it's actually a good size now i'd probably just keep this like this but what you will see as well is you do have these useful little clips that you can just force out and then you can put your shopping bags on there and the shopping bags will sit in there and not fly about which is really cool this is also where you get access to adding water for your windscreen wiper uh, fluid which is good and yeah it's you know it's handy it's extra and the best thing about it obviously is that all of this oh is a big crumple zone which makes this the safest car out there before we get out on the road, I think it's good for us to go through this screen because obviously this is the biggest piece about this car and probably the most controversial thing as well. Now you see on here the way it's laid out, we'll have all of the car information, so things like speed, what drive you're currently in, whether any doors are open, what's charging, and then you've got some quick commands here. So for example, hello. Okay, hello. All right, there we go, she worked. So for example there, you can access that. You can then open your charging bay from it as well. You can access your rear camera. And again, this just accesses the charging information as well. You can see we've got 109 miles, about third of the charge. This will do about 320 miles per charge, which is absolutely insane. And then you can close the charge port just like that as well, which is really cool. Now, one thing I have found about this rear view camera is that it's actually a little bit laggy. I'm really not quite happy with it. As you can see from this footage right now, it's just a little bit laggy. So I don't know if it's just a software update that's needed for that, but it seems to be a little bit slow for my liking. And then over here, you've obviously got this massive, massive screen, and this is going to be showing us our maps and navigation, which is just like, it's the smoothest and quickest maps I think I've ever used. Uh, obviously, granted that it's trying to load right now, but there we go. Look at that. It's just so nice. It's so easy to use, and the way it works is great. You can access all the superchargers that are available from here, Obviously, navigate straight to them, and it gives you all the information that you need. Down below here, we've got open the music app, which you can just open from clicking music down here. Uh, and I'm currently on the Spotify. So the car has Spotify built in for free, which is awesome. So you can access any Spotify you want. You've also got TuneIn for free, which gives you worldwide radio, including normal radio, and you can connect to your phone. And then in the settings, this is where you can play with the music settings. I like this setting. <laughs> this is pretty much me. And then you can balance it out as well. So if you've got kids in the back of the car, you can put it all the way forward to you if you want, or you can keep it out in the center. And then in the options, you've got your immersive sound. This is why I say this is the best stereo, uh, sound system I've ever heard in a car. It is so immersive. So I've got it on high and allow mobile control so that then you can access all of the music and media from your phone. So if your passenger or someone in the back seat can do that if they want to. So that's pretty much the music setup. Obviously, you can do all of it from your phone if you want to as well. And then in here, you'll see we've got Bluetooth connected. We're connected to Wi-Fi. The dash cam is recording. Sentry mode is now on 
and then my settings here for me is obviously under Oliver or then we've got the valet mode and you can completely change your profile through here so we could set up a brand new profile uh, but I'm not going to instead what I'm going to do is show you what you can edit through your profile so if you go into the settings menu you get these adjustments here so you can adjust your mirrors so if you click on that you can then adjust the left mirror uh, for example by using this scroll wheel so you can see it's going all the way up and then it's going all the way down and you just set it through there and that's actually a really really smart system because you don't change your steering wheel and your mirrors enough to justify a button down here or a little toggle to use it or for example a toggle over here for the mirrors so i really like that and once you've got it set you're never really going to touch it i'm going to go through all of my settings and you can see what i set everything to just in case you maybe want to copy them or change them or whatever so i have everything on auto for lights pretty much uh, and then you can have your window locks if you want and then obviously the display brightness for the screen is on and that's in the quick control setting so if we go to the light settings you then get them in a little bit more detail and you can even go into your ambient lights here and turn them on which is nice uh, you've got your dome lights on auto and everything else is on what though is a steering wheel light can someone let me know in the comment section what does the steering wheel lights do i haven't looked it up yet and then as you can see here, you've got your keys. So I've got my phone, which is a key. And then we've got two key cards, which is really cool. You've got a child lock and the window lock, of course. And you can unlock on park, lock confirmation sound, which obviously just makes the noise, and walk away door lock, where you just get out your car and walk away and it locks itself. So the display is on auto, of course. You can do screen cleaning mode. So now you can wipe it. There you go. You can see actually how much uh, is on here. And then if you just press and hold for three seconds, it gets rid of it like that and you can change your languages your time formats your energies blah 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 everything through here which is really really quite cool okay driving now i have it in sports mode of course so it'll do 0 60 in 3.2 seconds steering mode is in standard regenerative braking is on standard as well not going into track mode just yet but one day we definitely will and i have creep on because if you don't have creep on it drives kind of weirdly anyway autopilot cruise distance is two I've got everything turned on and on here we've got enable at every trip and we want mad max mode and then down here in the summons i've got summons on tight the, and then the furthest distance and the shortest bumper clearance so that you can really get into a tight spot which is good uh, speed limit is on relative plus four miles an hour because that's roughly what i'll do uh, so for example if you're going in like a 40 it can go up to 44 on autopilot and it won't go any higher because obviously at 44 you won't get a ticket but at 45 you might do forward collision warning is on early lane departure avoidance is on assist and i've actually used that once or twice out of interest and it's worked really really well and then everything else down there i have turned on because why not it's safety navigation um just have it basically like that pretty simple i think that's how it came as safety and security is an interesting one you can set a speed limit if you want and then sentry mode is obviously the big one here now for sentry mode you actually need to put a usb in um a thumbstick and it goes just under here so i've got a thumbstick plugged in just under there and that is what captures all of my sentry mode and my dash cam then we've got park assist on security alarm on tilt on no pin to drive just yet but i will be putting one on because that's nice and safe of course and allow keyless and mobile access servicing there's not really too much to see on here to be totally honest you can just adjust things like your headlights so you can adjust them and bring them up and down by using again the wheel here on the wheel <laughs> uh, you can use that to adjust the headlights which is actually really really cool towing you can reset the sensors and then a full factory reset and then you've got all of your information here on the software so turn the software to advanced and you'll always get the newest and best software and then of course here you've got the glove box button which i've shown your volume up and down your rear heated window your front heated window oh and as you can hear it's turning on then you've got your heated seats which you've got three settings on and then here is a very interesting section now this is your wind i guess i don't know what to call it ac yeah ac why the hell did i call it wind um here you can actually adjust the flow see that you can actually adjust the flow of the air so the passenger can change where the air comes from now really cool is that you can split it so you can actually split the airflow and have multiple air flows all around the car look at that see that how cool is that 
really really funky and you can actually then have it different so if you want the air coming through here and up the steering wheel you can if you want it swooping around the steering wheel each side you can trust me it's absolutely awesome and then of course we've got dog mode on uh, and climate control on so you can keep the climate on even after you leave the car the wipers are clearly on auto because it's currently wiping for us and those are all sorted by here which is only one of the few buttons in here so you've got obviously push so that water comes up on your screen and it cleans it and then you've got the wipers and you've got your indicators and then on this side over here you've got your reverse neutral drive and autopilot and traffic aware cruise control and the parking brake and that's pretty much all the buttons actually on the screen. Now, one thing we haven't obviously gone into is this absolute array of extras. So I'm going to really quickly run through them. Charging obviously just shows you all your charging information. Calendar shows you your calendar if you want to put that in. Then you've got your energy here, which is good because it shows you your graph. You can see this is where I, in a minute you're going to see some launches. I just filmed those. That's the launches right there. And then what else we got? We've got the web browser which is great. So obviously the web browser works well. It's a little bit slow, like now, as you can see, it's a little bit slow to load, uh, but it works really well. And it's it's fairly responsive. There we go. Once it's loaded the page, it's fairly responsive, but it's really nice just to have um, a web browser in your car for when you're stationary. You've then got your camera access for the rear camera. You've got calling so you can call people. I'm gonna have to blur that out. And then you've got your toy box. Now this is always the interesting area in the toy box. Let's have a look at this. Now this opens up the little Easter egg menus. If you wanna see all of the Easter eggs available, make sure to check out my other video. And that's where you get access to all of those Easter eggs. But one of the new things that I haven't had before is in the arcade. You've actually got new games like Beach Buggy Racing 2. Let me show you this real quick. There we go, okay. Oh my gosh, right, right, right. I've gotta get used to this. So you can use, okay, you can actually use the real brake on the car. So I'm actually using the brake on the car to uh, brake my car like that. The accelerator, it auto accelerates. So you don't have to press the accelerator. And then you've got like a boost button there, which I assume actually might be one of these buttons on here. Boom, there we go. We can push past. Wait, we're first place. Oh no, no we're not. But do you see what I mean? Look how well this plays. This is in a car, everybody. Are we just, are we getting this? This is in a car. Uh, I don't know if actually you can use, no, that doesn't seem like it does anything. Uh, you're gonna have to take your hands off the wheel. Oh no, we're getting wrecked. But what this does is it opens up um, the car to loads of developers to make some really incredible one-off games, but also port some incredible already pre-made games. Oh no, I'm being dragged around, I'm being dragged around. I'm gonna use whatever that is. So I'm going to do a video on obviously all the gaming stuff very, very soon in a lot more detail. But I just wanted to show you guys it. Let's put the police sirens on for now. Woo! Beach Buggy Racing 2 is not the only game available though. There is an array of games, but trust me, it's the best one and probably the only one your kids are going to want to play loads of. The Atari games are really good fun, but quite hard to play sometimes. Chess is good and so is 2048. I think the three newest games that they've added are the best games so far. Beach Buggy Racing 2 being the ultimate best. And that's pretty much it. That is the interior and exterior of the car done. Let's take it for a real quick spin, and I want to show you its acceleration, deceleration, uh, taking it on some fast roads, and a little bit of autopilot too. It's time to do a few launches. So you can see we've got a nice road ahead of us. We're in like this weird Salisbury Plain area. It's absolutely beautiful when there's no one on this road, but it's a really good road. So this is going to be my first actual launch of the Model 3 performance. So I'm really excited to actually feel this for the first time. Ready, steady, go. Holy crap. And that's 60. Wow, that is a rocket ship. Oh my god. So that's 0 to 60 in, I think it's 3.2 seconds. And it's pretty, it feels pretty much as quick as when I have launched like a Model S uh, or a Model X of some sort. And I'm going to do it again. So there's no one behind me. Let's do this one more time here. This never gets old. Ready, steady. Okay, so obviously I haven't got any timing gear here, but if you guys can comment down below from start to finish and frame, you know, go through each frame and see exactly how fast that is. Uh, it's a little bit of a cold day, so we could probably get better times. Uh, let's try it again, shall we? There's still no one behind us. So we're gonna have another go. I'm not sure how many times you can do this <laughs> until you vomit. No, I mean more until you, uh, 
Whew, until you start wearing out the battery and it says like it can't do quite that many. All right, let's do one more. Here we go. Coming into another one. Okay, ready? God, it is, it is relentless. It is absolutely relentless. It's incredible. And this is pretty impressive too. Look at its turning circle. It's got a really, really tight turning circle. Oh my God, it's staying on this road completely. Wow. That is actually really, really impressive. Okay, so we're gonna go down here and I'm not gonna speed. Whoa. I'm not speeding at all down here, okay? We're just staying at 60. This thing is rapid. Hard brakes, the brakes are really good. Super responsive there. You can see way ahead that no one's obviously around. And we're going the speed limit, so it doesn't matter anyway. Let's take that. Oh, that is amazing. That is what I was after. A little car with a lot of power. And this does not disappoint at all. So what about if you don't want to hoon it everywhere and be a bit of a hooligan? Well, this car is actually great for that as well. It's really, really easy to drive, especially through town. It's super small, it's really compact, and the instant acceleration just allows you to dominate any kind of urban driving. Now, I'm used to driving the Model X and a Hummer H2 and an Amarok, so, you know, pretty big cars. And this is so fun. I feel like I'm in a go-kart. So we can whip around these corners here and... I guess I'm going fast again, but like still going 50, you can just really tighten in on the roads. It feels super nice. Yes, it's a little bit bumpy and a little bit hard, but I don't mind that. I actually quite like that. So let's jump this into autopilot, shall we? And show off the autopilot features. There's gonna be a whole array of videos, obviously on autopilot coming up, but I just wanna show you an initial drive on autopilot on the Model 3. Now, obviously we are hindered here by the new UN slash EU laws, which makes this, a pain in the ass. You can see that there it's saying that auto steer is limited and you can see as it started to go it had to slow down to make it around that corner. And I found that this is actually a little bit more sensitive than my Model X. I think my Model X kind of goes around corners a lot harder than this does. And I don't know if that means that this will learn how I drive, it will learn how I use autopilot and then it will slowly affect it. Here for example my Tesla Model X will go around it without that issue. Whereas on this car as you just saw it did have that issue. So I think maybe it just needs to calibrate a bit more. It needs a little bit more time on autopilot so it gets up to parity with the miles I've done on my Model X. But obviously it's running the same software just with the brand new full self-drive chip down there that my Model X should get at some time. But I did drive it all the way back from London to Swindon and 99% of that I did on autopilot and it was just as good as the Model X, if not better on the motorway. You see it broke there uh, a little bit again to get around that corner but it's absolutely fine on these roads, it's good. And there's gonna be so many more videos to come on autopilot. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and I gotta slow down, hit that notification bell and get ready for all these autopilot videos to come. And that'll about do it for today, everybody. I just wanted to do a real quick overview of the car today, have then a couple of days with it myself and really get to know it and then literally flood you with videos. I'm gonna do videos on absolutely every part of this car. Let me know down below anything specific you want to see and I'll try and do it. Of course, autopilot videos will be coming. I'll be testing the heck out of this thing, doing some really fun and silly things. Uh, but yeah, do let me know if there's anything specific you want me to see. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to check out our sponsors. Make sure to join us on Patreon and also Instagram. Subscribe, turn on that notification bell, all that good stuff. We're going to be bringing loads of Model 3 content out super soon. Until next time, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.